right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, this Boston Pro that's coming up this weekend. We've got physique updates from almost every major competitor in that show. Um, but the competitor list has been updated to, to include Steve Kuklo, which essentially means that this Boston Pro has become an Arnold Classic rematch of the top five minus Brandon Curry. You've got basically second through fifth, well, literally second through fifth here, Bonac, who was second, Steve Kuklo, who was third, Samson Dowda, who was fourth, and Justin Rodriguez, who was fifth. So let's get into the updates because all these guys posted an update today. So the first update that we got was from William Bonac. Obviously, William Bonac wants a little bit of redemption here. This was pretty much the biggest story of the Arnold Classic weekend. And the most common thread that I saw in the comment sections was people saying that Bonac was robbed. Bonac, to me had one of the most impressive showings at the Arnold Classic because so many people counted him out. So many people thought he wouldn't even crack the top six. I saw that comment a lot when I was predicting him to be second. And to be fair, you know, those predictions that people were making, they weren't that far off considering the fact that over the past two years, Bonac had been dropping in placings. He was slipping a little bit. But it looks like he completely turned things around and he's back to where he used to be. The Bonac that was runner-up at the Olympia. The Bonac that was winning Arnold Classics. That looks a lot more like the Bonac that we just saw at this Arnold Classic, and now we're, I think we're about to be looking at a Bonac that's coming in here to win a show. I think a lot of the shots that looked the best for Bonac, especially when compared to Brandon, were shots like this. His back shots, the detail that he has in his lats and lower body from the back is extremely complete, and I think that's one of the things that really showed what kind of shape he was in and really showed what kind of detail he brought, and you can see that in this picture. Granted, he's in the goon light in the gym, but I think a likely scenario here is we see Bonac come into this uh, Boston Pro Show and dominate. And there's a lot of prize money on the line here. It's a big purse um, having that truck included in the prize. And they've got like, they've got Akon performing there. They've got Brandon Curry uh, doing uh, a guest appearance, like a photo op thing. I think they've got Cutler's going to be there. Ronnie's going to be there. They've got all these star studded guests. It's going to be like a little miniature Arnold Classic. Now, another guy that we just got a physique update from was uh, Steve Kuklo, who says this was taken at three days out from the Boston Pro. And this will be interesting because, like I said, Steve was third at the Arnold Classic, but it wasn't it wasn't close between him and Bonac. I think Brandon and Bonac were in their own league in one and two, and that's why they did so many call-outs and spent so much time on just comparing Brandon and Bonac because it was so clear that they were that far ahead of the pack. And actually, if you look at the scorecards, Bonac had a score of 18, and again, Bodybuilding is like golf. The lower the score, the better. The lowest score wins. So Bonac's score was 18, his total score, not just prejudging our finals. This was the combination of the two. Kuklo's final score was 38. So even though he wound up in third place, there was a 20-point difference between him and Bonac. So a lot of people might be thinking, well, let's see at this Boston Pro if Kuklo can take out William Bonac and win the show because that would be the most likely rematch because he was third and Bonac was second. But honestly, looking at those scorecards from the Arnold, I think it would be it would be a stretch to say that Kuklo is going to beat Bonac. Um, and he, he's got a lot of distance that he has to overcome um, between that second and third at the Arnold. 20 points is a lot. And I don't say that to say that Steve's not going to be a threat because I think, he, I think he is going to be. But I think the real rematch is going to be between Samson Dowda and Steve. So Samson was fourth. His score was 41. Steve was third. His score was 38. So they were separated by three points while Steve and Bonac were separated by 20. I think everybody else is going to be battling it out for second here. And I think Steve um, and hopefully Samson and Justin will be in that conversation for second. Now, I don't think uh, Samson has posted a post Arnold Classic physique update yet. So we'll go over to Justin Rodriguez. So Justin, he was the guy at prejudging of the Arnold Classic. That impressed me the most. He came out at prejudging looking like a world beater. I mean, he was his conditioning was insane. He did everything that he needed to do for the prejudging. And this is the most recent physique update of of uh, Justin. And I think this was taken today and posted today as well. So just a couple days out from that Boston Pro Show. But look, at prejudging, Justin looked fantastic at the night show. Well, I shouldn't even say the night show. I should say the second day because, again, I want to reiterate this. I said this in previous videos. This was the first time in history that the Arnold Classic has done a two-day show. So some of these guys that aren't used to that might have trouble peaking twice. So Justin, to me, it looked like he peaked at prejudging on Friday but missed the mark on Saturday. This Boston Pro Show 
is going to be a one-day show. Prejudging and finals are on the same day. So maybe Justin has better odds of nailing it here at both prejudging in the finals. And maybe we see him in second place. Maybe we see him move past Samson and Steve because his score swung so far at the finals of the Arnold because he looked so much worse at the at the finals. That point difference between his prejudging score and his final score is what made him move down about two placings from where they had him at prejudging. So that's kind of what I'm looking at for this Boston Pro Show is looking at the possibility of having a different outcome for Justin. Because like I said, maybe with those two, the prejudging and finals being closer together, his scores will be closer. They'll both be good and they'll both be closer to being the same, which I think would put him closer to the runner-up position um, and not so much looking at a fourth or fifth place. Because Justin, when he's on, he looks fantastic. I don't think anybody would argue with that. But in his update, Justin is looking pretty good. He's looking really sharp, and that's how he looked right before the Arnold. So maybe we're going to see him nail the conditioning twice back-to-back at the finals and the night show. That's what I'm hoping for for Justin. I want to see him get some redemption here. Um, But also in this lineup, looking for redemption, speaking of redemption, is Regan Grimes, who posted this front double bicep at two days out. He also posted a front double bicep at two days out from the Arnold Classic. So Regan looking for redemption here. He was one of the guys that was outside of the top six at the Arnold Classic, which is not a position you want to be in when there's only nine competitors in the lineup because being outside of the top six basically means you're also bottom three. And the reason for Regan's placing at the Arnold Classic, I would say, is a combination of two of the things that we talked about a lot going into the show. He gets outsized in some of these lineups, and I also think he was holding water, specifically in his back and some of the side shots. He looks pretty. He looks really good from the front, and that's why a lot of the physique updates you'll see from Regan are updates from the front. But once he turns around to the back and side, it's where you can see him holding some of that water um, and then just all around in some of the poses is where he gets outsized. But I'd love to see Regan get some redemption here as well. Now let's talk about a non-bodybuilding show this weekend uh, story. Lord Jones, Brian Jones, who competed at last year's Arnold Classic and Classic Physique. He was a top guy, first call out there. As you guys know, after that Arnold Classic, he made the announcement that he's going to be switching to men's open bodybuilding. Um, And we've been watching his journey transitioning from Classic to Open. And he posted these physique updates where he says he's weighing 244 pounds. So he's getting close to 250. I do think he's a taller guy. And I'm wondering when we are going to get to see him make his men's open bodybuilding debut. Because you guys that know me, you know I love a good crossover story. Crossovers in bodybuilding are always fun. Whether it's from men's open to classic, classic to men's open, 212 to classic, 212 to open. It's always a fun little uh it's 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 a fun little plot twist. It's always it's always entertaining. And I think that Brian Jones is gonna be one of the first classic guys to come to open and do really well. I think he he's kind of like a Cedric McMillan type of physique, a taller, aesthetic guy. He's got a pretty good amount of size, to be completely honest. Um, and I think it's going to be one of those things where conditioning is going to be the thing he needs to nail because that's where he missed the mark at the Arnold. And it's going to be even more important men's open bodybuilding. For a guy like him that's putting on a lot of size and putting on a lot of weight to be more competitive at a bigger weight in open, I think that same focus that he's putting on putting on size should be that should be also put on uh, coming in shape, if not more so. Then in addition to that, all these other shows that we've got coming up, one of them in May is the Indie Pro. And we're seeing a physique update from a competitor we haven't seen compete in a while. I can't remember what the last show that he did was. But Peter Clancier, he will be doing the Indie Pro, which seems like it was just yesterday um, that we had last year's Indie Pro, but it's already it's already another one. Last year's Indie Pro was where Blessing competed. I think Blessing is also competing at this one. And I'm sure that's a, a competitor list that we're going to be seeing come out very soon. Uh, But Peter Clancer, it'll be exciting to see him in that lineup. Like I said, it's been a while. And we are only 10 weeks out from that show. I mean, time is going by so quick, but it's exciting because we're getting back into the swing of the bodybuilding season. A lot of people are wanting to qualify early for the Olympia. A lot of people wanting to get those points. A lot of people wanting to win shows. So you're about to see a lot of shows start to pop up as we get closer um, from spring into summer. And it's about that time of year. Now, another update that I've got for you guys today. We talked about Lee Priest's transformation yesterday, or we t- we talked about his physique update at least, um, but Lee was talking about it more on Instagram yesterday. He posted a video where he discussed it a little bit. He basically says he sent those uh, progress pictures to Dave Palumbo, who he's working with Dave on his transformation. So he, I, I believe he said it's going to be about a 16-week transformation. Starting on Monday, working with Dave, and he says he has no plans to compete right now, but then he also says, we'll see what happens. We'll see how he's looking at the end of the 16 weeks. So he's not saying no, but he's not saying yes. So what what I take that as is a maybe. 
Maybe we will get to see Lee Priest compete again. Maybe. I think if Lee Priest had no intention of coming back and competing, he's the type of guy that would just say flat out, obviously, no, I'm not coming out and competing again. I think there's a chance he might if he looks good enough at the end of this transformation. So that'll be interesting to see. Always been a fan of Lee. Always been a fan of his physique. And it'd be cool to see him uh, Masters Mr. Olympia maybe. But I'm going to be mostly curious to see how he trains through the imbalance that he has, um, which was caused by that nerve damage, because that's going to be a big factor in competitive bodybuilding. Symmetry symmetry is heavily judged, and it's going to be something that he's going to have to overcome if he does want to come back and do a show. Regardless of how good he looks or how lean he gets, that imbalance is going to be something that would need to be it would need to be fixed. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about all the stories we discussed in this video. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit that like button if you liked the video. It helps out a lot. Hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed yet already. And also click that bell notification icon to be notified every time I upload a video. As soon as these bodybuilding shows are over, there's a video going up. So if you don't want to miss one, click that bell. As always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.